I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can use the scratching control in M-Rhythmizer. So M-Rhythmizer is a really cool tool for creating all sorts of like glitching sounds or volume sounds or even like a uh, filter effects. But someone asked me recently, like, how do you use the scratch here? And basically what this does is it creates a scratching sound, but it's basically a manual way to use this time module. So if you look in some like presets, you'll see things here like for each of these, like, okay, it has a different uh, like pattern here, right? And these are cool, but what if you just want to, you know, scratch yourself using this control? You can do that. So I'll, I'll play this um, song here I have that I wrote, and then uh, I'll move the control. Okay, so you can see it creates kind of like a scratching sound. So one thing, I'm not sure if you noticed, but if you move it just a slight bit, it sounds like, you know, a real turntable scratching. However, if you move it all the way here, it has like a really high-pitched noise. And that's because of how much, uh, you know, like volume, uh, I guess, displacement you're doing. So if you want a more traditional turntable sound, I recommend doing it just a short distance, probably less than negative one. And you might be thinking, what are these numbers, like negative one, negative two? And this is how far back uh, the time is going to go. So each of these numbers is a beat. So I'll play this, and I'll move it to eight, and I'll let you hear how it's going to come in after eight beats if I move it to negative eight like this. So ready? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see, it moves it back and delays everything by 8 beats. So normally it won't do that, but as you heard, it's at the beginning of the uh, playlist. So that means it didn't have anything before this to play. So it just nothing happens until it gets to the very beginning and then it plays it again. So that's basically what it's doing. So if you're wondering, what are these numbers? What is it doing? That's it. So let's make this easier, though, because actually moving this with the mouse is a little bit hard. So let's make it slightly easier by going here, quick learning, and using a multi-parameter and you're thinking moving this versus moving the actual scratch isn't any different but one thing we can do is we can actually limit the range which is useful so like I said doing it at negative eight is probably too much so let's start at actually let's set this value at zero and let's set the max value at let's say negative five or actually we can even do less let's say negative 35 and let's hear what that sounds like if I move this around So, there you go. I could, might even want to move that down even a little bit less, maybe like a negative 25 or so. So it doesn't take much to create a cool sound. So don't think like, oh, I need to go to negative 8 or something. You know, zero point, negative 0 0.25 or negative 0 0.2 is enough to create cool sounds with this. But one thing is, if you notice when you kind of come back, it get, has like a like a slowdown sound, which I don't really like. So one way we can get rid of that is you see this wet dry here. I want to learn here like this. And now I have the wet dry attached and it should move together when I move this up. It's going to move to zero to one. So dry means there's no effect coming through, which is what I want. But there's, I'll play it and I'll let you hear it. So that kind of slow down sound where it sounds almost out of time for a second once you get to the bottom isn't happening anymore. That part's good. But you notice it sounds like it's lower in volume, which I don't want. That's because when I move it up to like the middle or something, it's scratching, but you're not hearing the whole sound. So you're hearing just like 48, 40% of the scratching sound. Now we can change that. So an easy way to do that is just go in here and we see where it says transformation shape. Turn that on click it and you see oh it looks you know, a linear curve 
and we can just change that and double click someplace up here let's just set it around like 25 someplace here now this will change the response curve so if I have it down you see it's at zero but then if I move it up just a little bit you see it's quickly moving up and then once I'm here it's already at 100 percent so anything past here you'll be hearing the full scratching sound so I can move that and then when I move it down it'll quickly go back to zero so let's try this So that's closer to what I want. So this is cool, but you're thinking, eh, this is annoying doing this with the mouse. So I can't even do this in time with the mouse, so that's why it kind of sounds bad when I'm doing it. But you can hook it up to a MIDI controller. So let's say if I wanted to attach this to, let's say, my mod wheel on my keyboard. So I have this. Make sure you have uh, your track armed and it's going into a MIDI channel or MIDI channels going in. So I have it on learn so you can do it that way and I can just touch my controller here. It goes to main one. If you're wondering what main one is because I know I was. Here was his main controller. It shows you. So main one is my global MIDI wheel. Or you can just select it here if you don't want to use that and then turn main one off or turn learn off. Now if you look here. Oh, it's moving up and down the way I want it to. So now I can use the mod wheel instead of my mouse like this. So there you go. So that's easier, especially if you're good with, uh, you know, using MIDI controllers. I don't particularly like using this, but I'm not too good at playing keyboards and I don't use my mod wheel that often but if you had like an XY pad I think this would be really cool for that and you could also split it up like a real DJ where if you move uh, let's say in the Y direction on the Y pad you could have that controlling the scratch and then have the uh, X position the left and right controlling the dry wet so it almost be like a crossfader on a real turntable if you like that so that's one way you can do it and I'll show you let's say one more thing here so let's just take this scratch off here, okay? And let's find another way to move this. So generally I'd probably use this time here, but let's say for some reason you wanted to move the... I can go into mod one here, click clear, learn, just move this a little bit. Now turn this on. And it should start moving sound, although it's kind of going really slow here. So let me turn the sync off. So it's moving a little bit faster. You can see it's really jumping around. But I don't want this shape. Let's just try this. Okay. Now, as I do this, you'll be able to hear that it's moving up and down. And uh, it'll be scratching automatically. So I don't have to actually move anything with my mouse. Except for the scratch, which is controlling the wet-dry now. <laughs> That's cool, but it's way too slow, and we can, of course, adjust that to make it much faster like this. That's cool, but if you want to make sure it's in sync, instead of using the frequency, we can just hit sync here, and we can set it to whatever tempo we want. So here I have the phase at 0%, but I don't want that. Let's try, like, 16th notes. Maybe this will be good. So, there you go. That's one easy way to do that. So that way you don't have to worry about like scratching it back and forth yourself. It's just scratching it automatically. And of course, you can go in here in the step sequencer and there's all sorts of crazy patterns you could do if you want something a little bit more interesting. Although, I think if you're really trying to change things around, just go ahead and type things in for in the time boxes here. But if you just want something fast, I need like a quick scratch, you can do it this way and it'll just save you time and it's easy and fun. So, Hopefully this answered uh, any questions you have. Uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have a comment, leave that down below. Check out all the other plugins at MeldedProduction.com. And until next time, see you.